All right. Well, I'm Jill and we've been homeschooling for 10 years and we've been with CC for six and I've been tutoring for four. And it's been, I think that's probably why I'm still homeschooling <laughs> is that I've been with CC because when my kids started getting into the challenge years, I'm not sure I would have been equipped to provide exactly what they would need to graduate. And so having, having this has been really good. And then my little guys, uh, it took all the pressure off. I don't feel like I have to chase a whole bunch of things because I know I've seen what challenges. And so I know that that's coming. So that's my side of things. And this is my job. I've been with CC for six and a half years. Your mom posted on Facebook about an, a, a connection that you made between, I think it was a logic and math. Right? And yes. Yeah. So uh, if you can explain, yeah, kind of the, the connections that you made. Um, well, when I first started Logic, whenever people asked me to describe what I was doing, because most of the people I've talked to didn't even know what Logic really was, I would say, well, basically it's putting the English language or any language into mathematical form. But then like just two weeks ago, my Logic lesson actually did do exactly what I was saying it was doing, but except it actually exactly put um, different rules of logic into mathematical form, like the associative law for addition and the distributive law and the commutative law. They basically took them and changed um, the mathematical symbols to their logical symbols. And I was, I thought that was actually pretty cool that even before they did that, I saw that logic actually had a lot to do with math. So in logic, what we have is um, variables. And so basically you would represent an argument with a letter. So if you said, if birds are quails, then quails are birds. You could put that, you could represent, if birds are quails with P, then quails are birds with Q. And in algebra, you could represent five with A and seven with B, and then your next number with C, and then instead of actually having the argument in logic and in math, instead of actually having the number, you work it out with symbols. So you figure out how to work out the problem, and then you insert, in logic, you insert the premises or the argument, and then in math, you insert the actual numbers. If she's watching a TV show, she'll say, oh my goodness, there's the fallacy of this, and there's the fallacy of that, and that opposes, that doesn't fit the square of opposition. She really, I think logic might be one of her favorites. Mm -hmm. um, and well, she really likes to, to have clear arguments. If someone has, if they're going to try to, you know, argue a point, she, she really does love, and she, I think she likes having a framework for these fallacies and, and for why what you're saying won't work. And before, you know, you couldn't argue with her very well, but now, oh my goodness, she'll call you out on everything. And, um, and it's a lot of fun. It, it's a whole lot of fun. The TV one was the fallacy of distraction. What, what were we watching? It was, we were watching Gone with the Wind. Yeah. And they were in the room arguing over whether or not they should go to war with the Union. And right. the one guy, Cart Gable's character, I don't remember his Rhett, name. Rhett Butler. Rhett Butler. He said, well, we shouldn't go to war with them because, I mean, they're so equipped. And they kind of have, like, the president and the U.S. Army on their side. And the one man started attacking Rhett as a person. And I noticed that that is the fallacy of distraction ad hominem. And it's attacking a person rather than their argument. 